Good morning and welcome back to the John Muir Way and I'm here on the 4th and Clyde Canal uh, just a, a few metres away from Kirkintilloch Town Centre the uh, start of the 4th section of the John Muir Way we've got uh, uh, maybe about 13 miles today um, we're, we're probably going to mess up the sections that appear on the website but uh, Today we're going to be going through to Bonnie Bridge, um, which is a walk that's going to be pretty much all on the canal, apart from a section visiting the Roman fort and the, the remains of the Antonine Wall on Bar Hill. Uh, so in the meantime, it's a bit of a grey, dreek morning. It has been raining, but fortunately it's clearing up quite rapidly, which is good. There was a, a lot of heavy rain this morning. So I'm fairly optimistic it might stay dry for us. A lot of pavement pounding today. Uh, we'll see how we get on. So the uh, Forth and Clyde Canal and this uh, canal was opened in 1790 so what are we, 2024, we're uh, 225 years old almost. I'm not quite sure how long construction took on it, I guess uh, it would have taken a fair amount of time uh, to build this thing um, it's about 35 miles long and uh, connects the uh, fourth to the Clyde <laughs> hence the name um, so I'll just let that siren pass there we go um, in the west it starts at bowling uh, on the Clyde and in the east it runs through to Grangemouth uh, on the 4th uh, and the way, where it joins the 4th is actually where the sculpture of the Kelpies is which is, uh, I'll maybe pop a, a photo of that up on, on screen but they're the uh, well-known sort of horse heads uh, at Falkirk by the side of the M9 um, so uh, about 35 miles long uh, and uh, it allows uh, vessels to sail from one side of the country to the other, really. Uh, but this connects up with the Union Canal at the Falkirk Wheel now. And um, I'll talk more about that uh, when we get there in a future vlog. Uh, but the Union Canal connects the Forth and Clyde up with Edinburgh. Uh, and the, there were various ports on the canal in both Glasgow and Edinburgh. So there's Port Dundas and there's still the old warehouses there which have been turned into sort of flats and business studios. Um, and there's a port right in the centre of Edinburgh called Port Hamilton, uh, which majority of that's been filled in now. Um, so... Yeah, I'll uh, talk a little bit more about this as we go on. Uh, 22 years to, to build this, so it was quite some feat of engineering. The major decline of the canal came in the 1930s, really with, I, I guess, the expansion of road traffic and um, basically transporting goods by road became a lot more competitive and with the, the improvements in technology of uh, certainly road vehicles and the lorries of the age compared to uh, the uh, transporting things in the canal um, so it really only lasted about another 30 years after that and um, was closed in about 1962, I think. The, the canal was reopened in the 1990s and it is navigable 
from uh, the, the Clyde to the Forth again. Uh, but my major memory of this growing up was uh, where the, the main street in Kirkintilloch crosses. Oh, little goldfinch. Uh, where was I? Yeah. So, um, the bridge in Kirkintilloch, uh, it was in the 1930s actually a lift bridge and then subsequently they, they turned it into a swing bridge. Um, but after the canal closed, it was just infilled and the canal was cut off there. Uh, and it used to have just this uh, green duckweed that you could almost walk across it. The, the surface was just solid. Um, it <laughs> looked a bit like a, the, the colour of one of the cycle tracks you get on the road, that kind of green. Um, Unfortunately, the canal became the natural habitat of shopping trolleys and traffic cones uh, for quite a long time. But it, it's, it's great to see it open, being used so regularly by walkers, cyclists and fishermen. I'll just have a look back at where the trail came from. So, where the blue sky is, uh, up there is towards Strathplain. So the, the Joe Muir Way comes right in along the valley there, uh, in the dip between the hills. So. Uh, approaching Twecker now, and um, maybe I should have started this a little further back, but uh, you can see the trees on the hill uh, just beyond the canal. Um, that is the site of Barhill Fort up there. Now the, the canal was built really uh, pretty much on the same alignment as the, the Antonine Wall, uh, maybe just in front of it by uh, uh, you know, a matter of a couple of hundred metres. And the, the two pretty much run parallel from the Forth uh, to the Clyde. And uh, slightly ironically, the, the building of the canal would more than likely have been the biggest infrastructure project in Scotland since the building of the wall uh, 1600 years, 1700 years earlier. The, there's not a great deal of the wall left. Unlike Hadrian's wall, uh, the construction itself was really turf and timber and the, the, the biggest remains, if you will, are, are the ditches, and the ditches are quite spectacular even now, so you'll, you'll see those as we go up over the fort and onto, onto Croy Hill. One of the other features of the canal are these buildings, canal side, and you come across them uh, at sort of regularly spaced intervals, and these were stables. There's a few of them that have been turned into pubs and whatnot. This one's completely derelict. Uh, but it was places for uh, the canal traffic to swap out horses uh, for the for the towpath. I think they may be sort of somewhere in the region between five and ten miles apart. I don't think they're that. Uh, the the previous one is on the other side of Kirkintilla, so I I'd need to uh, measure it out on a map. But I think it's. Uh, uh, possibly around five miles. So I guess that the, the the horses used to pull the barges were were swapped out on quite a, a regular basis. And there's a better view of the fort. I'll, I'll pop an arrow on it so it's obvious. Uh, but it's the, the sort of green patch with trees on top of it just uh, on the hill there. And actually there's some great views back down the Kelvin Valley. Uh, we're just coming into Twecker now, um, so the, the turn off here is just ahead and uh, where the cars are crossing the canal, uh, we turn right to follow the walking route up onto the hill. Now if you're backpacking and you're camping, there is an eco campsite just a little bit further along the canal on the left, it's maybe a couple of hundred yards, not much more. Uh, and the name escapes me off, I'll, I'll, I'll pop a link up on screen and uh, uh, a link down in the description. 
but yeah, you, you don't have to go far down there, it's just opposite that wall that you can see. Uh, well, we're, we're turning on the, turning right here, going up the hill into the village, uh, and there is a cafe in the village as well, it's in the community centre. You can't really miss the turn for the fort, as they, they've signposted it pretty well. It has improved over the years. Uh, so we'll be taking a left here just beyond the War Memorial. So we're maybe about three quarters of the way up the site of the fort is just ahead of us. Uh, and I'll turn around for a moment and look back down towards the canal. Mm. There we go, we've got Glasgow in the background as well. The tall flats. Although the uh, the Kelvin Valley is a bit hidden at the moment. Just the the canal is stretched out in front of us. Now we're entering fo the fort by the southwest corner and the, the Jomier Way heads right across the middle of it. Now the place has been extensively uh, excavated in the past, uh, well, but quite some time ago now. Um, I think some of the, the finds are also in the Old Kirk Museum in Kirk and Tiller. Uh, let me just negotiate this style. Uh, but the, the fort was built uh, in, in and around 142 AD, uh, along with the wall, uh, and it's one of 16 forts on the wall that were, were built to protect it. So the, this, uh, po I was about to say predates, postdates Hadrian's Wall by around 20 years. Uh, so Hadrian's Wall was built around 120 AD. But, but there had been a presence of the Romans in Scotland well before that, uh, and they withdrew. So there's a, a line of forts, which I talked about uh, on my Rob Roy Way vlog, um, that are generally referred to as Glenblocker forts. Now these were built... Uh, around 80 AD, I think 86 AD seems to ring a bell. Uh, so, as far as I remember, the, the Romans did come into Scotland and, uh, and try to sort of conquer uh, right up towards Aberdeen. Um, there was a battle uh, in the area around the Gram Grampians uh, called the, the Battle of Monscropius. Uh, not quite sure if I've got the pronunciation correct of that, but uh, it was, according to contemporary Roman accounts, it was uh, quite a substantial victory for the for the Romans. Um, but uh, in the end, they left Scotland um, after that victory for whatever reason, they maybe abandoned their, their campaign up there. It's possibly political, uh, and sort of settled down in the area behind Hadrian's Wall, uh, which became more of a, a border control, I think, is the, uh, is the theory behind it. Uh, but with a change of emperor, um, Emperor Antoninus, Again, I think it was probably political kudos that 
decided to reinvade uh, Scotland and um, yeah so he came up here and the, uh, the the wall was built but this didn't last very long uh, I think the, it was about 160 AD around about then that the, the Romans upsticked uh, and left and to be honest I probably don't blame them that uh, being here it was probably quite wild uh, country, inhospitable co country. Uh, certainly, this would have been uh, a bumper. Uh, quite a <laughs> uh, quite a place to to be posted. I think they were um, uh, the unit here was. Was it Syrian cavalry, Syrian archers? Syrian archers. Yeah. Um, so uh, that that would have been quite a shock to the system for them, I, I would expect. Uh, coming to central Scotland, um, but yeah, I, I, I guess that it was really uh, trying to get the political kudos of uh, another conquered country. Um, and, and for whatever reason, they didn't stay very long. Uh, whether it just wasn't worth their while, and they, they retreated down behind Hadrian's Wall and and seemed quite happy there. Uh, it may well be that the that the Roman presence did hang on in the south of Scotland. There's some major Roman sites uh, which I'll get onto in the border station walks. Vlogs eventually down round, round Melrose. Uh, the Olden Hills there had a major Roman signal station on top of them, and there was a significant fort uh, just below it, uh, just outside Melrose. Um, uh, and there's forts all along the Clyde Valley as well. So it's uh, yeah, uh, it's it's quite a strange history, really that. They came here, built this, and and just abandoned it a few years later. Uh, but the other thing we've got here is the pretty much built Barhill Fort on top of an Iron Age fort, which is, as we come around the corner, just where the trig point is. Uh, although you can't actually see the trig point. <laughs> Just approaching the trig point, you get a good idea of why the Romans chose this point, as well as the uh, Iron Age folk who put their fort here. It's got commanding views of the Kelvin Valley. And just coming off the uh, Iron Age fort there, um, we're down next to the ditch, and this is probably one of the better preserved sections of the ditch. Um, I don't know where the wall would have been in the relationship to it, whether it was right up against it or uh, set back a little. Um, my guess is that it would have been right on top of the ditch to make uh, any assault on it as awkward as possible. But you can, you can follow the line of it up over the next hill just in the distance. It's one of the features of this section that although we're in uh, a very heavily populated area uh, th this is quite a, a, a green lane if you like through the middle and you don't really get that impression that you're in uh, a, a, a densely populated area. So we've got Cold South here and just over to the right out of you is, uh, is Croy and the outskirts of Cumbernauld, which is a vast new town built in the in the 60s and they, they, they keep adding to it. Um, but this has a real feel of being 
uh, out in the middle of the countryside, which is great. Uh, a nice little strip through the urban sprawl uh, of, of Glasgow, really. You can see uh, Ochenstari Marina just down below us. But great views of the Kelvin Valley up here. Now, although the the wall here was uh, just turf and probably wooden palisade, it was built on a similar principle to Hadrian's Wall with regular fortlets and along the route in between the, the sort of major forts and uh, there's one just at the at the top of the rise here uh, just uh, sort of probably similar in character to the old castles on Hadrian's wall possibly a the, the the footprints a little bit bigger We're going to scoot off to the left here, but uh, you don't really need to worry too much about route choice. And uh, if you'll pardon the phrase, all roads lead to Rome here. Yeah. So whichever way you go, you'll be on route. We're coming to the east end of Croy Hill now and the end of the John Muir Way's first flirtation with the Antonine Wall and uh, as we get closer you'll you'll be able to see the, the, the ditches still preserved in the landscape just uh, beyond the hill we'll be turning left here and heading back down to the canal and it's it's going to be quite a long step now along, along the canal and this is one of the bits I've got to say I'm not looking forward to because uh, I think we're going to have about six or seven miles possibly to uh, Bonnie Bridge all along the canal and all on tarmac so it's going to be quite hard on the feet And sadly we're saying goodbye to the wall now and heading back down to the canal. Might just be able to see uh, another ruined stables just poking out behind the trees there. This section of the canal just 
seems never ending at the moment. Fortunately we're getting quite a, a good push along by the wind. Uh, it's certainly picked up and the sun's come out as well so I'm not going to complain too much about that. But compared to the, the rest of the canal, it's this whole section is really, really wide. Uh, again, I don't really know why it's ended up like that, uh, whether it was a particularly busy section or there, there are a couple of mines close by, whether they, they expected a lot of barges just sitting there waiting to be filled. Um, I'm not entirely sure, but it's sort of the width that you could get a, a good sized ship down. Certainly the rest of the canal uh, is, what, about half this width, maybe uh, even less. But it's, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a trudge, this section, unfortunately. Uh, a little bit more pleasant now the, the sun has come out. reached about the 10 mile mark for the day so maybe got about three or four miles left. Well, we can't be far off the Castle Carey Arches and uh, crossing the uh, M80. The canal here when the uh, A80 was upgraded in the 1960s was just filled in. Um, so uh, the there was a crossing for the original A80, but uh, when the Joe Cathay was built, they just obliterated the canal. And um, when the canal was reopened in the early 2000s, I think it was, uh, I think it was the year 2000, it was reopened. So they completely rebuilt uh, the bridge over the canal. Uh, I guess subsequently uh, future proofing it for the motorway that's now there as well. Um, but this is much more pleasant and you can see how narrow the canal is now compared to uh, what we've just been walking along. There we are, the, the MM gives it away, built in the year 2000, upgraded. Oh, there's not much room to get under that, I think. Uh, narrow boats, yet yeah, uh, anything particularly big is going to struggle. Just looking back the way, and I've not done a great deal of filming along the canal because there's not really been that much of interest. Um, it, uh, the side of the canal has just opened up a bit, and it's got a wee bit of height now um, all over the surrounding ground. We've maybe got about a mile left, uh, maybe slightly less, but uh, yeah, it's. It's been a walk of two halves, uh, this one. Um, really nice from Kirk and Tillock up and the walk up over Bar Hill and, and Croy Hill is fantastic. Uh, but really when you, you come back down onto the canal, it's, it's a bit of a trudge and it's hard surfaces again. And this is really, um, it is, it's tough on the feet. Uh, and the body, uh, just walking this kind of distance on tarmac. Um, 
I know after the uh, uh, last day that I did from Carbeth to Kakintilic, it actually took me several days to recover from that, just uh, because of the impact it had. Uh, so yeah, it's it's no laughing matter walking distance on time. Well, we're just arriving in Bonnie Bridge, and uh, our direct destination is just a little bit further along there, around the corner. Uh, you can't see it, so that brings us to the end of uh, stage four for us. Uh, although we're finishing a bit of a random place today, uh, just a, a, a bridge on the canal, so not official stages, but um, uh, just ones that are sort of suitable for us to complete in a day's walk. Uh, so I, I'm not sure what the next stage will be for us, probably Bonnie Bridge to somewhere around Linlithgow quite possibly, so uh, look out for that, that'll be stage five. Um, and if you're enjoying this series on the John Muir Way, please give us a like, uh, leave a comment below or uh, even subscribe to us. And uh, thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you, see you on the trail again soon. Bye for now.